Hello and welcome back to another video. I've brought you with me on a bit of a gloomy evening walk. I can definitely feel the change of seasons is coming and that means I'm pretty much wondering how I got through last year with my autumn wardrobe, what the hell did I wear and how I'm gonna get through this next one and how am I gonna not buy anything new. A lot of the time the topic of sustainability is tackled by what you should purchase new things you should purchase from sustainable brands and massive changes you should make in your life. For me, my only downfall is fashion and I'm constantly trying to learn and reprogram my brain how not to shop. So I've got a little list. It is nothing groundbreaking or any kind of thing that you've never heard before, but it's some checkpoints that I use for myself to keep on track. First up on the list of sustainable fashion starter tips. Let's call it that, sounds pretty good. First thing I do is clear out. Have a look at what you've got, what you're no longer using and start with a fresh, clean slate. You can resell items and save the money for a kitty to save towards something that you really, really want. Donate, give away to friends, make sure that whatever you've got is getting used either by you or somebody else and take it down a notch. Try and be as minimal as possible so that you can really focus on what is needed. Some find that rather easy and refreshing and I did it quite a few months ago before moving on to my tiny home, which is a floating home, my 57 foot narrow boat, which doesn't have much space. So it was kind of an easy decision, choice or task to do. Once the clearing out is done, it is time to educate. I have two fashion vloggers, I guess you could call them, two, maybe three actually, that I follow that aren't necessarily my exact style. I'd say they are vastly more minimal than what I would like to be. The thing most helpful about watching minimal style icons, if I could say that, is that they are very focused and clear on what they like and wear. They know the outfits that make them feel good, the shapes, the styles, the colors. So listening and tuning in to what those people do is quite helpful in trying to prepare that for yourself. Even though I see myself as much more creative and need a lot more bits and pieces or a little bit more edge in how I like to dress, a little bit more fun, let's say. I definitely found it very, very helpful to listen to people who are super focused on what they like to wear and what they purchase. I will link those accounts that I follow below so you can go take a look for yourself. And another one that's really, really great is I follow the brand Tibby and Amy, who is the designer, owner, founder of the brand, does these IGTV live sort of style sessions and again a very focused point of view in knowing how to dress, knowing your own personal style and making that work for you and even though purchasing Tibby is not within my budget or anything like that, I find listening to those kinds of things very inspirational, in a way aspirational and just makes me not want to settle for anything less. Now that you've got a little bit of an education going, you might feel inspired, you might think you've got it all together and have a new way forward but you don't really know yourself yet, or at least that's what I found. And so for me, this is a time to organize and reorganize. You've taken your wardrobe down a notch, you've got less things, take it out, look at everything, fold, refold, regroup things. Just have sort of an organization play, Marie Kondo style, and really sit with what you've got, look at the pieces, perhaps try them on, build outfits, do your thing, but just take a moment to chill with what you've already got. Any kind of urges you may have at this stage to want to get new things or any sort of lack that you feel in your wardrobe, turn that into mood boarding, out for try-ons and taking pictures with your cell phone in the mirror and seeing what works and what outfits you like or what you can actually make of what you already have. This will curb the urge to sort of really want to purchase and I really find myself being re-inspired when I do get into my wardrobe and pick up those pieces that are really great and again it's just an extension of educating yourself this time not with someone else's influence but really knowing what you've been drawn to in the past what you still own that you love and um, you'll start to notice those gaps the next step is to get dressed every day as much as possible for me my lifestyle is a lot of working at home sitting behind a computer or sitting behind a sewing machine 
so it seems there wouldn't be the need to dress up. But, for example, like today, I'm out for a sunset, cloudy sunset stroll, and I popped on a blazer, I've got underneath what I would normally wear at home, I can literally take off the jacket and curl up on the couch if I want to, but I'm still dressed. Appropriate in footwear, added on an accessory for going out the door, know what feels right, what makes you feel comfortable and put together and allows you to fully tackle your day successfully. That's the most important thing with all of this. How do we feel? So now what? You've sold, you've donated, you've cleansed, you're shopping your wardrobe, you're organized, you've noticed the gaps, you've taken the pictures, you've done the work. Surely it's time to buy something already. Well, yes indeedy. It is. It is time for thrifting. This forms the bulk of what I love so much about training myself towards being much better at fashion sustainability. And it does require a bit more seriousness. So we're gonna tackle this one back at the boat. The benefits of thrifting, and by thrifting, I mean any shopping in a charity shop, shopping on Depop or Vinted for secondhand clothing, anything where you are searching for things that already exist. The benefits of this are twofold. You're essentially totally slowing down. If you get really specific about what you need in your wardrobe, it's gonna be difficult to find those pieces. And finding your size, finding good quality is difficult or sometimes hard to come across. It takes time and lots and lots of effort. Another huge benefit is that you're going to be viewing so much of what is already out there, so much of what people are getting rid of and what they aren't using. It's a great way to view how much people actually don't use or perhaps how many mistake purchases are out there. I can really spend so much time browsing around for secondhand clothing. It's pretty unreal. And it's great because it feels like I'm shopping, but I'm not. It takes forever to find something. And 99% of the time, I actually don't find anything. But I'm viewing things, I'm learning about what's out there, and it feels like I'm getting the shopping experience, but with no harm to anybody. The joy of when you do finally find something that you've really searched for, it's way more rewarding than just clicking on something that's too easy in all the sizes in all the colors that's too available this brings me on to my next point which is that the urge to get a quick fix after all this browsing around secondhand vintage clothing the urge for the quick fix is probably going to come back and that's totally fine if it does when it does I've linked some amazing accounts below. They really put things in little, neat, bite-sized, easily digestible packages that you can kind of just quickly view, run through the account, sets you back on track, and puts things back into perspective. If you don't want to know about the terrifying facts of what fast fashion is doing to the world, just step outside, take a breather, go look at nature or something. I'm lucky, I live on a boat. I just look at the water, calm down, and realize, what the hell, I don't need this. One of the most important things too is literally just understanding your lifestyle. I have had to do a lot of reckoning with myself and just understanding that a lot of the things that I think I need or want don't actually fit into my life anymore. And they might at some point and we'll deal with that when we get there. But there's a lot of things that I think I need or that fitted into a previous life that I really don't use right now. I spend my days walking or behind a computer or behind a sewing machine. I think I've said that before. My wardrobe needs to work for that and I don't look for anything else outside of that. All that said, there is nothing wrong with being prepared for when occasions do pop up. So I'm often running through my head of what I would wear, say if I was invited out for an evening to a party, maybe a music event, something like that. I'm always switching up outfits that I already own, already love to wear, and thinking about how I can dress them up or change them for different types of occasions. Then if they do pop up, I know, I've made a note, or I've taken a picture and it's saved on my phone and I can easily just switch it out and be event ready. And lastly, we've made it to the last 
point. I definitely would like to just state that making this like a 10 point list is just for the purposes of a neatly packaged video. These are just things that hopefully maybe sparks an idea for you that maybe you're not doing that you can switch out or maybe you could just switch out one of your purchases that you make or one style of shopping or when you next get the urge you'll think perhaps let me just go organize my wardrobe instead or try on some things and get to know my style a bit better. Watch some YouTube videos and educate yourself on things you'd like to wear or how to better know your style and just be inspired by fashion rather than trying to accumulate it. So for the last point I'd simply say it could be time to perhaps treat yourself and then go on and buy something new but I think after doing any or at least some of these steps you might be more prone to make a better informed decision. Something that you will own and love for a very long time and perhaps even something from a sustainable brand. No greenwashing. So that was my little sustainable starter kit of tips. I hope you enjoyed and I hope as I said, it's inspired you to maybe just think a little bit differently about shopping and fashion and the things we accumulate if you hadn't thought about it before. There are some very clued up people who do amazing work around this kind of topic, but I sometimes feel like I'm still at the beginning stages of learning about it. Even though I upcycle clothing myself and I believe in all the values, it's sometimes hard to just stay the course and um, really practice what you preach. So I wanted to make this video and just solidify it for myself and remind myself about what I want to do going forward and how I want to be and how I'd like to view my relationship with fashion. We definitely can have all the fun and all the enjoyment and wear all the amazing things and have new things and have beautiful things. But I think the privilege of actually wearing and owning great pieces sometimes falls by the wayside because we don't give them the love and value that they deserve. And that means wearing them, using them and enjoying them for a really, really, really long time. That is the best way to be sustainable I think. If you enjoyed this video there'll be loads more on the way hopefully with less bird sounds in the background but I've got loads more ideas for styling options and similar to what you've seen from me before but definitely subscribe my posting is sometimes on different days so hit the notifications bell as well and I'll see you for more fashion bits soon.